Well, hello there. Thank you for joining us tonight. We are taking you both sides of the bridge. It's Steve Watts here, and on Sunday, Sunday 21st of June, it should have been Kent against Essex in the Vitality T20 Blast. A fixture which is known as the Battle of the Bridge, or as I prefer to call it, the Rumble in the Tunnel. Sadly, <laughs> COVID has put pay to that. Although I'm becoming increasingly confident we will get to a Battle of the Bridge or two uh, in before the end of September. But what we're going to do during this session, as we can't bring you the cricket, should have been down at Canterbury for that, is have a chat with a couple of guys who have represented both of these teams. They've seen this fixture from both sides. Delighted to introduce to you tonight Matt Walker and David Masters. Matt Walker, currently Kent's head coach, appointed in 2017, uh, played for Kent for many years, 15 years, and then had a spell with Essex between 2009 and 2011. Matt Walker, hello to you. How are you doing? Good evening again, Steve. Yeah, very well. Just as good as I was last time I saw you, I think. Yeah, but I haven't seen you in the flesh this summer, which is uh, no, really yeah. beginning to. Uh, my, you see that if you could see my heart, you'd see blood coming out of it. Uh, <laughs> great to have you with us for this Battle of the Bridge, these reminiscences which are coming up. And also delighted to be joined by David Masters, who also represented Kent and Essex. First class debut for Kent, year 2000 against uh, Surrey. Essex debut 2008 against North Ants, uh, going on to represent Essex all the way through until 2016, and a phenomenally successful spell it was, taking 598 wickets across all formats. And it says, I didn't write this day, but it says here on my screen, still a fan favourite to this day. What an accolade. How does that feel? Oh, very nice. Very nice, mate. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I had, some, I had some good times at Kent, and I had some good times at Essex as well. Really enjoyed them both. Is that true? Do you still feel the love whenever you go to the Cloud FM ground down at uh, Chelmsford? Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. It's where I started and it's actually where I finished. It was my last game of cricket. So, uh, yeah, I always love playing at Kent. It's a lovely ground to play at. So, yeah, love still there. And whenever I think of Whenever I ever think of you, David Masters, which is <laughs> frequently, um, I always think, you know, sometimes you're watching people in any sphere, but particularly in professional sport, and you think he's not quite putting it all in today or she's not trying properly. You, David Masters, were always 175%, particularly the big grunt as you're coming up to the crease. That was pain, mate, I think, of bowling <laughs> so much. <laughs> was it always there during the career or was it just a later thing? No. Yeah, I, I suppose the grunt got louder the older I got, I suppose. <laughs> but, yeah. Certainly more audible as the end of your career, I can confirm that. Uh, thank you very much to all of you for sending in your questions, which we're going to fire now at both Matt Walker and David Marston. It's going to start with you, Matt. Uh, the Cloud FM County Ground and the Spitfire Grounds, well known for their terrific atmospheres on match days, especially for T20 games. But what was it like as a visiting player? In fact, you can answer this from both sides. What was it like playing at... Chelmsford and at Canterbury as a home player, but perhaps more especially as a visitor? Well, um, <laughs> I don't remember playing very much for Essex um, against Kent. Um, there have been a couple of games. I think mainly they were at home at Chelmsford. Um, that was one four-day game at Canterbury, I think. Um, but didn't play that often um, away. But Chelmsford, as an away player, was treacherous. It was brutal. Um, I remember a game, I can't remember what game it was. Holly was, put, I think, got the wicket, but I caught the catch at mid off or mid on. Um, actually, no, this was, sorry, this was playing for Kent. Apologies, I was playing for Kent. And I took a catch and gave it a bit of a celebration. And I then got abused, I think, every single corner of the ground. It felt like <laughs> was just on top of me and that didn't leave for the next sort of 30 overs it was it was extraordinary um there's nowhere to hide you, you sort of you think you're safe just at mid off but i was getting abused from from all stands um it, it was it was i think it was always good fun as well though i think it was it could be quite hostile but i think it was always a real fun element to the to the stick you got from the chancellor crowd i remember james treadwell fielding a, a fielding a fine leg or third man or long on and he was, uh, how should we say, probably a bit portly at that stage of his career. 
And it, so he tried, was desperately trying not to make eye contact with the crowd as he's walking back towards facing the crowd. So you, you turn around and, and, and reversed, and uh, the crowd, brilliant. They yell, beep, 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 beep. The old, the old lorry reversing came out, and it was just brilliant. <laughs> It was a great moment, and there was always that side of it. There was some when the West Ham when the West Ham massive were in that got a bit tasty. Oh, yeah. but, uh, but they were extremely, you know, you know, when you played for your, you know, when you played for Essex at Chelmsford, the crowd were right behind you, and it was the same for Ken when you played at Ken. Um, they were right behind you, and I suppose as a as a as an opposing player, you expect the crowd to be right at right at you, and it was the same at both both grounds. Yeah, Dave, if you were a visiting player down at Canterbury at the Spitfire Ground, it's a bigger ground, but did you still feel that atmosphere as a visiting player at Canterbury? Yeah, I did. I, I probably got abused quite a lot as well, to be honest. Coming back to Kent, um, yeah, well, wherever I filled it, uh, in the end, I'd just make sure I was at mid-on and mid-off. It was just easier and better. And there's only so many times you can be called big-eared and, and all <laughs> them types of things. So. Yeah, no, really? no I, I think, I, I think um, obviously, Chel Chelmsford is, is a lot smaller as a ground and it, and it feels more on top of you than what Kent does. Kent's um, obviously a lot bigger and, uh, and you can hide a little bit in areas of uh, little pockets of the ground. So, um, yeah, when it comes to atmosphere, I, I, I think Essex is probably, Chelmsford's probably um, a louder atmosphere, but... Um, I always liked playing at Kent. It was a relaxing kind of place to go and play cricket. Should try so working very there. Different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so both grounds, both sets of supporters have reputations as being very partisan. You've got to name one here, which is most partisan. If you're an away player, which ground would you fear playing at most? Canterbury, Chelmsford? Chelmsford. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Only because I played there more as a... As a as a, a, a way player, um, as I say, I think I only, I don't think I played a one day game at, at Kent um, as an Essex player. I may be wrong. I do remember actually, funny enough, my last year at Canterbury, I was still playing for Kent and I was obviously heading to Essex the following year. No one really knew that, or at least I didn't think so. And then uh, it was against Essex, that final game of the season. It was a, it was a one off, whoever won, won the French Provident one day league. Um, Kent Essex, I was playing for Kent. You know, against my my team, my my sort of future team, and uh, I think I was on the boundary. I, I fielded one and got some abuse from a Kent fan. Like, Kent Walker, you traitor! Soon you go to Essex, the better. I was like, wow, this has started already. So it was, um, yeah, they, it was there, it was lurking underneath. But I never really probably felt the full force of the, the, the Kent fan, fans as a, as a way player. But Chelsea, just, Toddy's right. You know, it, it was on top of you. It was. You know, an evening game at Chelmsford, it, it got uh, it got pretty intense at times. I've seen, I've seen them ruin so many people there. That <laughs> crowd. I've seen so many people, so many players get absolutely finished. And you don't want to miss it one day. Uh, if you drop a catch oh. and you're out in the deep, well, the next one coming to you, like the pressure, <laughs> just just the abuse they got. I've seen two or three drop catches by the same bloke on that band many <laughs> times right in front of the uh, clubhouse. Yeah. And you, you just sit there and you actually feel sorry for them. <laughs> you actually really do. And then the opposition, but you actually start to feel sorry for them, which is uh, all good fun. Us mere mortals who've only played club cricket, we think that you pros can rise above all this sort of stuff, but it sounds from what you're saying there, Dave, that actually some players have been intimidated into perhaps not performing as well as they might have expected. Oh, most definitely. Oh, look, everyone says don't worry about the crowd and don't worry about this, but there, there is times, there is times when you feel under pressure and, and then that does happen. And We won lots of games at Chelmsford when I was playing for Essex through the fact of teams the, the fear in their face when they're running to pick up the ball bobbling and yeah it, it was always 20 30 runs always really that many yeah have I, you ever seen, I was gonna say have you ever seen any players like really lose it in the face of the barrage of what maybe be getting like that I've, I've seen a few i've seen i've seen a few of our own actually andre and now really? jumped, over the, jumped over the barrier one day into the beer tent and <laughs> yeah and uh yeah he 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 didn't look too happy. So, 
Um, yeah, I've, 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 seen, I've seen a few. I've seen lots of words being said and bits and pieces, yeah. But um, at the end of the day, the supporters are there. They're there to have a bit of fun. And as Walk said, when you, when you, get, the, uh, when you get the West Ham massive in there, um, it can be uh, quite daunting for a few of them. I'm sure. I'm very sure about that. Uh, Matt, you just mentioned the 2008, uh, the one-day final at uh, Lords between uh, Kent and Essex. Was it a friend's provident final in those days? Essex victorious. This question is directed uh, at you, David, actually. Um, what are your memories from that uh, 2008 final? Um, very surreal day. Um, obviously, packed house. First time I'd played in a packed house at, at um, Lords. So, I remember uh, bowling the first ball at Joe Denley was batting and um, he looked very nervous and he's standing there waiting for me to run into bowl and uh, walks at the walks of no, I suppose. But that, that, that noise while you're out there is deafening. But no one's like, there's no screaming or shouting or anything. Just before the, the game's about to start, it's, it's like you can just hear every single conversation around the ground. All of a sudden you run into bowl and it all goes absolutely dead quiet. And, and, I, and I remember bowling that first ball at Joe Denley. We both looked at each other and thought we were a bit of a sigh of relief that I'd bowled in the right area. He blocked it and we was happy. And then we went on from there. But it's a real day. I remember lots about the game. Um, getting Robert Key out was brilliant, especially when he, he told me afterwards he didn't even nick it. And that was even more fun. So that was even, even better. Um, yeah, and just a, it was a great day for me. Obviously, obviously on the winning side, I, I, I'm lucky I've never been in the losing final. So um, I should imagine that's not very nice. But um, yeah, uh, I don't remember a lot afterwards, to be fair. <laughs> Good night out in London, was it? Or did you go back to Essex? Uh, no, it was in London. I, yeah, as I say, I don't remember a lot of it. So you don't it was uh, fun. You can't remember. No, yeah, we went we went to some seedy place, probably in some little dingy <laughs> nightclub somewhere. But um, yeah, no, I, I think I come off the ground after getting champagne squirted in my eyes and face, and probably drinking quite a bit of it on the pitch. I, yeah, I'm not the best of drinkers as it is, so <laughs> struggled. Matt, you remember that day because Kent at that time had a, a, a terrific uh, one-day side, in particular a white ball side. Uh, T20 champions, I think, the year before. I think I'm right in saying both Kent and Essex that year were at T20 finals. Though. Is that correct? I think. Yes, they were. Middlesex won it. Middlesex yeah, beat right, Kent in the, the final. Yes, yeah, the G-Star. Yes. That's right. Um, hmm. Yeah, my, my memory's a little bit different. I didn't play in the game. Um, I was left out. Um, so weird. Very weird feeling. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain. You're not playing. You're obviously you know, you're disappointed, but um, you're out of control. You can't do much about it, and the game wasn't going our way. Um, I don't remember much about it, really. I do remember speaking to Jason Gallion about talking about playing for Essex the following year. <laughs> that was the early stages, actually, of striking up a bit of a conversation about maybe moving. Um, I remember catching him sort of, sort of after the game around the dressing rooms, and we just had a chat. So that may have been the sort of start of... Um, Sort of next chapter of my career, but uh, yeah, it was um, at Lord's, at Lord's final is amazing experience, but it's not a great place to be when you when you lose. I've sort of been involved in two and, and lost two, so it's um, yeah, it, it, it's great for the it's great for the I think for the sort of up until the moment you lose, and then it's sort of the last place you want to be and last thing you want to remember. Really. Seems strange, Dave, to uh, to think that Essex. Um, for the first time last year, one that the, the Blast title so good as their record mm. been during the years of the tournament. But what a stellar year for the county last year! Amazing, yeah, amazing to to, to do that in long format of the game and and the very shortest. We always used to say walks, didn't we? That that's so hard to do to to actually actually compete, even compete at both of them was so hard to do because of the of the such difference in types of cricket they are. And having to train so differently for each of them um, is, yeah, I, I, it, it, I, I'll struggle to see many people doing that again, many teams ever doing that. I think it's a very one-off thing. I don't, I, I'll, I'll be shocked if that happens again, to be honest. Mm. And especially coming up with the county championship title so quickly from Div 2 to lifting the crown in Div 1. Mm. 
Yeah, it's it just it's a, it just goes to show that like I, I think when you get on a bit of a roll in four day cricket, I think it's massive in four day cricket because you you kind of you get that winning mentality and and you just keep going and and that's generally what they've done for the last what four years I suppose. Interesting you should say that. We'll direct this to you, Matt, as you're a coach now, about the different training, different preparations for T20 as opposed to four-day cricket. Someone like me might think, well, it's a game of cricket, but obviously the preparation is vastly different. Yes, it is. Um, I think, you know, when we were still playing, it was... Um, well, it's, T20 is a very different game, you know, even in that short space of time, although I say that's been eight years since I, I last played and obviously slightly less for Dave. But um, I think T20 now, the way people practice it, it's, you know, it, it's, it's part and parcel of the players' winter programme. They, they stay on top of it during the summer um, and people are getting much better at that game. So I think now the transition is, is slightly easier than probably when it was when, um, when we played. Um, it's difficult when... You know when the when the season mixes the formats. So um, when it's in blocks, as it was last year, slightly easier because you can completely focus all your attention on one format. This year it went back. Not that we played it, but um, it's, they they chuck it in amongst some championship cricket, which is always difficult. I think you know Dave would, would, would recognise that. So it, that's the hardest part of the game. I think is going from a four day game straight to T Twenty. Um, for a couple of T20 games, then back to four days. That's that's mentally draining and it's physically demanding. Um, and of course, trying to get used, to switch back on to the formats is um, is not always straightforward. But I think now players practice it so much more than they ever did. You know, T20 is such a important game for players. Um, the, the rewards are so great. The individual rewards are so great. There's so much franchise cricket. Um, everyone wants to be brilliant at it. So I think the now. Chopping and changing isn't quite as uh, as tough as for some, um, but it does take some planning. And you know, as a coach this year, I was scratching my head a little bit. The schedule was was fairly brutal. We started with seven championship games back to back, and then in come the T20 mixed in with some with some four day cricket, and then uh, and then back to T20. Um, so it was, yeah, it was always going to present some some challenges. But players are used to it now. It's always been a little bit that that way. Um, but now the format, you know, the T20 is such a such a different game that players need to be absolutely on their on their skills to really compete. And both of you would have been there right at the start of T20. When was that? Two thousand and three, if memory serves me correct. And right. we always hear that back in those days, it was seen as a bit of a laugh, really, for players, a bit of a giggle. It's just a night out and nothing more. Was it really that much? Was it just considered a bit of a, a bit of fun, Dave? And it's now become this big, serious, well moneyed thing. Well. I was playing for Leicester at that time, and we actually took it really seriously because we were very good at Leicester in the early days. Very, very good. Uh, well, yeah, we, we we kind of took it very seriously and kind of and um, was a little bit ahead of the game, I suppose, in in that sense. Because as you say, I think I think we played four out of the five first five T Twenty days. Um, yeah, we won it twice, so it was. It was yeah, we, we we took it quite seriously. But I remember like seeing some of the the Surrey boys and and, and the Middlesex lads and things like that, and they they literally didn't take it seriously at all. I think they had different names on the back of their shirts and everything. I think their nicknames and bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah it was taken. It was taken a bit of a joke and a bit of a laugh. But look at it now. It's, yeah, we had nicknames on our shirts. It was. Did you? It was, yeah. Well, I don't know if it was the first year or second year. It was. Yeah, had yeah Simo had something. Called, what did Simo have on it? He had, yeah. Simo had a nickname on his foot, didn't it? I, I don't know. It was, I think, yeah, Shahida Freedy had Dave on his back. Yeah. Uh, Treddy was, I don't know, Pingu or, I don't know, something stupid. It was mad, really. It was, it was, a, it was a bit of a surreal experience, though, that first year, especially. No one really knew what the hell was going on. Games were passed you by. You felt like you batted for like three balls in about three weeks. And, you know, it was just, yeah, no one quite understood it. No one quite knew how to play it. And then it didn't take long, though. It didn't take long for people to sort of work it out a bit. And, uh, well, the rest is history. It's now, uh, now a very different looking game. Although, to be fair, that first, I think that first year, Simo, 140 balls in, in it twice. I think. So he kind, of, he kind of got it. But he was a bit of an outlier in that period. No one else was quite doing what he was doing. Successfully. 
Um, and then now it's the norm, really. That's all. Yeah. Sort of yes. Yeah. Were either of you taken aback in that first year, or in fact, some of the early years, by the size of the crowds that turned up? No one quite knew what was going to happen. Anyone sort of take a deep breath when you saw how many people were coming in? Yeah, it, it got big quickly, actually. Like, the first few games, it was it, there, there was crowds there, and everyone was, like, excited to see it. But it actually brought a young crowd in. It, it was more more popular. It was more of a drinking culture kind of crowd what come in. So, um, yeah, I think everyone was taken back by it. Every, no, no one thought it would be or go the way it did. Um, re they really didn't. But, um, yeah, great, great now that it's here. Matt, I remember, you take it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I remember, I think, I can't remember, Holly, you, you've got a better memory than me, but I think we might have played Leicester in a quarter-final. I don't know whether it was a, whether it was a one-day cup final, a quarter-final or, or T20, but I'm pretty sure it was T20, because the place was rammed, and, you, and with all due respect to Leicester, you never played at Leicester when it was anywhere near rammed. You're lucky if you've got 100 people in the crowd. On the yeah. But it was rammed, and I, I, never, I was still on the boundary, I got the, biggest, this young voice gave me the biggest, rudest abuse you could ever, ever I said, turn around. And his dad was standing there like that. He was all proud of his <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is, this is different. This was, uh, this was, this was before the, the Chelmsford crowd started getting Larry, but it was, uh, that was the sort of early point I thought, this is a bit different. You know, I'm getting abused by a six year old here and his dad's laughing behind him. <laughs> so it was a bit, it was a, I think, yeah, it, it did sort of, because uh, we, I, I don't think there was a, I mean, we talk about the hundred more recently about this whole sort of anti, you know, anti the hundred and real sort of opposition for it. And it, it was a bit like that, actually. Maybe yeah. not for the, it wasn't that there was no social media power back then. But I think the players, especially, were looking at going, this is bizarre. What are we doing? This is Mickey Mouse. Um, and then, probably apart from Leicester, who actually grasped the concept pretty quickly. But I think. It didn't take long. I think people worked out the finals day was a brilliant event and people wanted to get there. It was exciting. The games very quickly started to become more and more exciting. You know, final ball game, last ball games. Um, and once you sort of worked out how to, how to go about playing it and what, what the skills were and actually start practising the skills because we never practised it. You know, God forbid, you know, you start slogging spinners out of the net back in the day, you'd get called out of the net by the coach and you get abused by the senior players or, you know, there was no, there was no practice around it and that was, that was the way it was. Now, you know, it's tailored into everyone's, you know, personal, you know, development programs, white ball practice, learn a new shot, can you do the ramp? And it took a while to get there, but what, I mean, what a format it is now. Yeah, best day in the sporting calendar as well for my money. T20 final, so I absolutely love it. Better than the FA Cup final, better than anything else, T20 finals day. Let's hope we get one this year. Um, this next question that was sent in was, is aimed at you, Matt, but Dave, you can answer it as well. Um, what does it feel like coming up with your teammates, both as a player and now as a coach? People are expecting you to have some kind of inside track map against Essex <laughs> when Kent play them. Um, yes, I, I think... Always, the, the trouble with that always is that players are allowed to improve, you know, and I think that's always key. You know, you have information, so much information now on players, all the video footage from every ball they've hit from the previous five or six uh, seasons and beyond. Um, you know what you know about some of these players. You've played with them, you've played against them, you've coached them. Um, I think you just have to keep a bit of an open mind and you try and concentrate a little bit more on, on the plans that we want to put in place um, that suit our best bowlers so you don't want really to get sort of sucked into sort of stuff you might have known three or four years ago um players work very hard at their games and they get better so you I, I don't treat it any differently to how would planning a, a game against the Surrey yes, uh, middle six or ever any opposition um it's weird it is strange you know you come up against your own old teammates especially as a coach because um i think when you've coached players so you know, my, my example, I've coached all those Essex players. Well, not all of them, but the majority who are still playing now. Um, once you, when you do that, you have a real... There's something... You're bonded with them, really. And it sounds a bit corny, but you're, you, you, you've invested in their careers. You work with them. You feel very... You know, you feel very 
proud still when they do very well and you're pleased for them desperately. And when you play against them, of course, you don't really want them to succeed. But, you know, if they do, it's great. Um, so it's a very, you, you feel sort of, sort of sort of paradox about it in some ways. Um, you just don't lose that connection, you know, for the players that you've coached. Um, to then you play against them, you can't, it's very hard just to dissect as much as, you know, of course, I have my Kent hat on now. We do all I can, all we can to get Wesley, you know, Nick Brown, Cook out. Absolutely. Um, but there's always that something in there that, you know, when they do well, you feel very pleased with them. And uh, it's genuine because, you know, you've been part of their coaching life. So it's a weird, it's a weird one. Um, but, um, of course, you know, I happily see Essex get bowled out for 100 every time we play against them, of course. Um, as, long as, they, as long as the lads do brilliantly, you know, they're not playing against us. I dread to think how long you must spend coming up with plans to get Alistair Cook out. <laughs> no one can get him out. Um, Dave, did you, um, did, you, did you enjoy coming up against ex-players, ex-teammates? Love it. It's a challenge. I always love the challenge. I always like playing against ex-teammates, ex ex-teams who I used to play against. I always enjoyed it. It was just that extra little bit, what, um, what you need sometimes just to get him. But man, that's right. You, the, the difference is, though, you spend so much time with with these guys you spend so much time with with your mates and things like that it's not just on the field every day in the change rooms you, obviously you go back to hotels you spend time with them so yeah it, it can, can be hard sometimes like is it, you, you could never you could never be nasty or, or quite boisterous on the pitch with them them players with your ex we, we used to have a laugh more than anything I used to just take the mic and have, have some fun really um yeah, so so it is it is hard, and being a coach for Matt must be must be even harder because uh, you do you it's, do grow that bond, Matt, didn't you? It's weird though, isn't it? Because I, I remember playing against uh, playing um, for Essex against Ken, and you do, you do what it's, as a player. It's funny you desperately wanted to, you know, you wanted there's, you Holly's right. There's that extra yeah. bit. I absolutely desperately want to win this, you know. And, it's not a rub their noses in it. There's not, I had no business leaving Kent at all. I, you know, it was nothing, you know, my time was ready to move on and it was the best thing I ever did, probably, looking back. Um, but there was, there's, there's always that added, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I want to you know, just prove you wrong a little bit. There's always that little bit in there, yeah. which is great. Um, it's a very different feeling when you're a coach. You know, when you spend hours and hours with players and the tough times and, you know, you, and you've gone through it all. Um, it's a, it's a weird one. Of course, you know, you set your soul out to win a game or whatever, whatever it takes. Um, but there's always that empathy and sympathy and, and, and good feeling towards, I suppose, your, your ex, ex players that you've, you've coached. And we didn't work out earlier, didn't we? Obviously, you two spent a lot of time together in the same dressing room, but we did work out that you have played against each other and someone broke someone else's toe. What happened there? <laughs> yeah. Matt, Matt, Matthew, um, Matthew bowled me uh, um, a ball. I think it rolled along the floor and hit me on the toe. <laughs> very um, quick delivery. A, a very, very, very quick delivery. And I think I was about 11, I think we worked out the age was. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a benefit game, I think. It was a Lordswood, Matt, Matt, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, I think it was. And, I don't... Um, yeah. I can't remember now. Matt coming off the sight screen and um, yeah, and used his hype and let me have it <laughs> as, a, as a young eleven-year-old. But I've got to teach him early, Steve. This is important. I don't think we played against each other. I don't think I can't remember. Someone will. Someone will. will we might have played up. against each other. Le Leicester. Leicester. Definitely. Again. Definitely. I remember played. that. I remember yeah. that well. But Kent Essex. Me playing against New Essex. I can't honestly remember. Can't no, remember. I can't. I can't. And what was the upshot of that broken toe? You have heard of uh, injury lawyers for you, haven't you? Any, any money <laughs> I, your I have. It still, it still, it still, it should be, it should be pointing straight up, but it doesn't. It, <laughs> it points to about ten or eleven o'clock at the moment. <laughs> still, so it's still there. He's still, he's still got his uh, his little uh, target there for him. So it was dead. Yeah. Stone didn't give, give it out either. That was absolutely disgrace. It's just, just going down. <laughs> I wouldn't complain about that at your age. Um, I've never <laughs> seen I've never seen Matthew Walker bowling ever. I don't think so. Oh. Um, Dave, Chris, what? could you talk us through it? No, well, I've seen you many times on those dog sticks in the net, but I've never oh. seen you bowling ever. Um, Dave, could you just talk us through it for Mate. those of us who've never had the pleasure? 
oh, you, you should have been there at Sussex. He bowled at, was it Bevan? Oh. Yeah, what a game. Oh. In a game. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Honestly, we haven't got, we haven't got long enough to talk through that, but yeah. On, and, and literally, they, they come up with a plan. I think the plan was they won't be able to get under Walks' ball. <laughs> so, Walks was going to come on and tie it up. And he did. Did you, Walks? Last <laughs> over the game, that was. Last that was over the game. For the whole match. And yeah, Fleming had messed up his overs or gambled somewhere else. And that's uh, yeah. the last one to... To Bevan. That was an yeah, incredible game. Well, we, we scraped home somehow. I don't know quite how. What, man. Your bowling walks. There's Mate. a few in the pocket, Steve, isn't there? Oh, there's a, not as many as you, great man, but there's a few There's a few big names in there. A few good ones. Peterson's in there. Essex. Gilf, uh, Whitgift School. 2010. Yeah. <laughs> which, which, gave, which gave you most pleasure then from this long list of wickets that you took that I missed? Um, which 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 name gives you the most well, pleasure? Well, there was three when I played. I was just saying about that sort of coming back and trying to do some damage against your old county. There's three for Ken: Treadwell, Van Yarsfeld, and Malinga Bandara. That was a nice three to get at Canterbury. Bandara, uh, the best ball I've ever seen. I think Bandara. Off. Bandara. Hit his leg hit off. Yes, it was a seed. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they're all great seeds. Steve. Peter Peterson was a nice one. Fair brother, near Phil brothers in there. The way Shaw. Let's not go on about it because really, yeah, we should be talking about bowling with me. There's a, there's a slightly better bowler just below me <laughs> on the screen. I'm actually, I'm actually above. I'm oh, sorry, you're above on your screen. <laughs> no, but listen, if, if you've got Martin Van Yarsen, a quality player, if you've got him out, you should be proud of that. And Kevin Peterson, I'm sure there was great joy in that. Um, on this subject um, of bowling, and who whoever knew Matt that you was you were so good? I I I, I apologise. I never knew you. Were it was good. Uh, no, a question for you, David Martin. <laughs> um, question has come in for you, Dave. Is um, who was the best batsman that you had trouble trying to get out? Obviously, Matt Walker accepted. Who, who used to give you real problems? No one really. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to say that. I knew <laughs> I could let me say so, right? I, this is, I, before I let him carry on a second, I used to travel. We used to travel together all the time, up and back from Chelsea, and it was brilliant. We used to like, drive into a game, and it'd be like Somerset, and I just, I just say, oh mate, just got it this week. He's just you know, three hundreds in a row. What, what do you reckon, mate? Don't worry about it. I'll give him the any out. He nick him off. No worries. Do you know what he, he did? And then the following week, it'd be, I don't know, Peterson. No, no, don't worry about him. No, no issues. I'll just do that. I'll, I know what to do. I'll nick it. I'll, in front, no worries. And sure enough, he did. He, he, there was never, and I it got, I said it every time now, every time we travelled, just to see what he'd say. And it was the same answer. No worries, mate. I'll get him out. And do you know what? He, he almost, every time he, he almost played well, did as well. You know? It was incredible. So no one gave you any problems then, David Torner? No? Once. Chris <laughs> Gale. Oh, Chris yeah. Gale. Chris Gale. Did he unleash on, did he unleash on you? Well, yeah, he, we played on the edge of the square at Taunton and uh, yeah, he just, just kept whacking me over that little short side. Yeah. <laughs> well, he actually missed it, three of them, and they still went, but um, no, nah, he, he was, I always thought to Scott it was a serious, a serious batter to bowl at, um, had so much time, um, made you feel like he was bowling backwards, I, I was most of the time, but he, he, he actually made you feel like you was bowling real slow. Um, and then, obviously, Chris Gow, um, when, he, when he got into his stride, especially in 2020 cricket, he, there, was, there wasn't a lot you could really do with, with him. He was, um, he was uh, pretty special. He's so strong. We miss it for six, as I said earlier. No. Yeah. Matt, were you coaching Kent, that extraordinary game, Kent Somerset, a few years oh. ago, when Whoa. Chris Gow went... But I can't remember what score did he get. He got the most enormous score and ended up on the losing side. It's probably <laughs> that was up there has been one of the worst. That's quite an early coaching experience from head coach experience, actually. I had <laughs> awful. I mean, we got a plenty to 220, 230. Uh, North got 100 for us, played brilliantly. Um, and we just kept getting wickets to the other end. The gale was still there. I think he was at 14 and over from probably about three overs into the game. But because he was at the crease, they were they stayed at 14 and over all the way through. And you just felt, my God, if this goes down to the last over, at 12 or 14 and over, they're probably going to win it with him at the crease. 
And I think he won by by about two runs or something. It was horrible, yeah, it was horrible, yeah. horrible, horrible experience. And he's just, oh, he's right. He, it's not much you can do. And then you know, he hits the ball miles. And it helps being at Taunton, of course. You know, the ones he doesn't quite get still sail out the ground. But phenomenal power. And he's just so hard to defend against. So hard. Mm. Well, on that subject, there's a, there's a question that came in, uh, which is about your favourite uh, Essex and Kent grounds. We kind of covered that earlier, talking about Canterbury and Chelmsford, but other grounds around the country. Dave, where did you enjoy playing at, particularly away from Chelmsford or indeed Canterbury? Um, I enjoyed Worcester. I, I didn't like the pitch, but I enjoyed the, the place. I enjoyed uh, Worcester. I thought it was a really nice ground. I, I wasn't one for the big grounds. Lords was a special day. But I, I, I wasn't really over fussed on the oval. Um, but I, I, I kind of liked the smaller grounds, the nice looking grounds that I always liked. I loved playing at Canterbury because it just had that kind of that nice feel with the tree in the middle of the pitch. And um, yeah, so, so I wasn't one for the big test grounds or anything like that. Um, as, as, as special as Lord's is, I, I suppose that's, that's obviously the best. Um, but I did like the smaller grounds. Worcester is beautiful. What about you, uh, Matt? Where did you where did you like? Playing? Did you like the Oval? Because Kent and Surrey is a yeah. big rivalry. It's always about twenty five thousand in the Oval for every T Twenty match. Um, yeah, I like the Oval. I think you know there's some, we always used to have some great games at the Oval. Um, it's now it's now I think now it's an incredible ground. It's not far behind Lords, um, but but same as Dave Lords is every time you play at Lords, it's it's a special moment. Um, I like Edgbaston from sort of personal experience, really. Scored a lot of runs at Edgbaston and we won a few things. You know, finals day was a win there for us. 2007, we won, a, I think, a Norwich Union League at Edgbaston on the, on the final day. Um, so that was always a good hunting ground as a team and, and individually. I like Cardiff, actually. I think Cardiff... Um, yeah, I, I, I think everything about Cardiff. I love the city. Um, I the Wolf, yeah, mm. the walk from the hotel to, you know, through the gardens to the ground. The ground I like the ground. It's small. It's, uh, I know um, it's not a good place to get to play if you get a first ball. It's a long walk from the dressing room out to the middle. But it's um, something about it. I've always enjoyed playing there. Um, we're very lucky. I think yeah, the grounds we play on week in, week out are, are exceptional. Um, I just enjoy Colchester, actually, referencing, referencing back to Essex grounds. I think it was always, um, out, I love, a bit like Dave, Outgrounds are always good fun. They don't happen as much mm. these days. But um, playing at Colchester was always a real highlight for me in, in, the, in that seat in the season. It was a kind of lovely feel to it. It was, you know, it was a club ground, but it, it was it was producing really good cricket actually. Um, so yeah, the outground sort of era has gone a bit. But uh, heading up to Blackpool and you know Whitgift School and some of these places you end up, they sort of it's just a bit different. And it was it sort of took you back to your roots a bit, and it was always uh, always good fun. Cardiff, yeah. Vodka Revolution, Cardiff. <laughs> That's it, was, it, was, it, was hard, it was hard work walking up them stairs after 30 hours. I used to jump yeah, in the yeah. lift at the bottom. <laughs> Do you remember walks? You used to take the lift by the way up there, isn't it? Yeah. You used to get the lift in your studs all the way. <laughs> I did. I did. I used to walk through the um, through where all the punters are, straight through the, uh, yeah. under, the underground and uh, straight into the lift and straight upstairs in the lift because oh, after bar. 35 hours there. <laughs> Don't forget that. What's that? You used to go via the bar for, for a pint of Coke and a Mars bar. Don't forget that. That was Rego. Go have a pint of Coke. <laughs> that was my rehydration. Absolutely, mate. Well, Absolutely. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> so all these dietitians and everything we see in the game now, rubbish, yeah? Pint of Coke, Mars bar does the job. Sometimes you've got to feel good, haven't you, Holly? You've got to feel good factor. Shane Warren lived on it. Well, <laughs> yeah. We didn't see eye to eye, me and the, uh, me and the nutritionist and the, uh, and the S&C. They, we wasn't really, uh, we had different thoughts, I'd say. Mate, he's one of these lucky so-and-sos that can eat what he likes. i never forget picking him up. I picked him up at, oh, he must have been, I don't know, 15, 16, 17. Picked him up for a game from his home, home to drive into Canterbury. And he just, oh, just stop at the services. He walked, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came back with never seen so much chocolate in your life and sort of ploughed his way through it. <laughs> he gave me a bit as well, which was good. We became friends very quickly after that. And, uh, 
he just doesn't put any weight on. He, I hate him for that. He's he, like he, I mean, he bowls to be for about two two hundred thousand overs a year, which probably strips him back a bit. But uh, yeah, annoying. Annoying. That was the hard, That was the hardest thing travelling up to Chelmsford every day. Walks. We had to go for about past about three McDonald's. Didn't we? <laughs> <the way. laughs> yeah. We did three. Yeah. Yeah. T20 win was always a McDonald's stop on the way home at Brent, yeah. Brentwood. Always regulation. We, we used to say, we'd just have a shake. We'd just have a Coke. <laughs> yeah. And we used to go in there and all of a sudden, little cheeseburger. Go on then, little sweaty. Five, yeah, a little sweaty. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, Matt, I'm with you. I can't stand it. I've got a mate like this. It was like a bean pole. And he never puts a pound on. You go to McDonald's with him and it's like, well, I'll have six chicken and nuggets, but I probably won't finish them all. And he's piling quarter pounders and this, that and the other. And, <laughs> and then he said to you, oh, it doesn't matter how hard I try. I just can't put a pound on. And it's oh. me to feel sorry for it. Oh, I can't stand Fozzie it. Fozzie was like that. Fozzie, Fozzie was I like that as well. He, yeah. James Foster, I remember in, like, literally seeing him broken man one pre-season and going, man, I just can't, I just can't put away. Doesn't matter what I take. I'm like, you're speaking to the wrong person, mate. Why are you yeah. doing this? You know, I'd happily give you some of mine if it was a procedure, but you know. But walks, just... walks. When we went, when we went to Barbados, do you remember when I got put on Fat Club? <laughs> you were skinny fat man that week. That, yeah. Do you remember? <laughs> I they do, baby. These, they brought out these things. What was the worst thing ever brought out? These skin fold testing things. Which I used to get away with because I was quite tall and I'd look quite slim. But when it comes to these fat testing scowl things, what they used to have, pincers were like. Walks, me and Walks was like, this is just going to kill us. So <laughs> every, every single year, for well, two or three years, me and Matt was on Fat Club running up and down, oh. running up and down the beach every morning at seven o'clock, wasn't we? I was never, I was never getting out of it. Those no skinfold testing had anything to do with it. Me, you, Maunders, wasn't it? Me, you, John Maunders. I think that's it. Beat. <laughs> oh. Cursing, cursing the physio. Yeah. Uh, good. Well, I'll tell you what. Who never thought it's crazy times that we live in that we're sitting there we're talking about McDonald's is bringing a smile to our face. It's something we used to do when I was a lad. We used to go to McDonald's. Can't do it anymore. It's terrible, well, isn't it? Uh, I can't. queued up the other day. I. <laughs> Have you driven through? I mean, I'll tell oh, you I've queued back. up. I've done, I've done 45 minutes. I can't, like, I, I'm now sort of poacher turned gamekeeper now, unfortunately. Like, you know, the lads, service stations, lads, you know, head to Waitrose and get something healthy. Yeah. yeah. Get charged 15 do. quid for a sandwich. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. what you do. <laughs> there we go. So, different times. Well, different yeah, I'll tell you what, sad times as well. I was in a queue for 45 minutes at home base, so I'd rather do that than McDonald's. What has happened to my life? <laughs> um, now, another question that came in here for the pair of you. Um, it's about favourite teammates, but uh, I think we'll, we'll move on. You can weave that in if you like, but your greatest and worst moments in both a Kent and an Essex shirt. Um, for Dave, for you, I should think that aforementioned 2008 one-day final was right up there for you. Yeah, that was my number one, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Um, most enjoyable day. Um, it's, it's it's very different. I, I suppose obviously we won the sec, uh, the D Division Two Championship as well. That that was special, but in a different way. It's kind of a, a hard thing to to put into words. But you you kind of play a whole year of four day cricket. It kind of means something as well when you win it at the end because it's so hard to 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 win a four day competition. So yeah, the Lords final was was amazing. Um, but uh, obviously, obviously, um, yeah, the four day stuff is good as well. So there's not a line between them two. And for you, Matt, the year before that 2008 Lords final, Kent were the, the T20 champions. It must have been a big highlight for you. Great memories of that day. Yeah, that was the high. That was the highlight for me. I think we were underdogs going into that. Com, I think Lanks were full strength. Sussex had an incredible side. And ironically, it was Gloucester and Kent in the final, the two underdogs. And uh, two amazing games of cricket, two real nail biters, um, amazing atmosphere. I think any time you win, you win something is, is a highlight. You know, the individual success is nice. But when you win as a team, I've said this a few times, you know, it, that's why you play. That's why I played. And I know that's why Holly played, to win. You know, you try and do everything you can to contribute. But 
winning the you know Norwich Union a couple of times with Kent and the, and the T20 was a highlight with with, with Essex. You know, we didn't really win anything in my three years playing, but we got promoted. That was an amazing day at Derby, an incredible game. You know, from out pulled it out of the fire really. Um, Tendo, I think Rabi chased down an incredible target on the last day. Um, that was an amazing feeling. Um, so yeah, they're, they're the moment. I, you know, I do you know, remember a, quite a special night at Chelsea in a quarter final, T20 quarter final, I think 2009, maybe 10. We beat Lanks. It was a great game, and that was a special night. Um, but yeah, I think when you win, any game you win, you know, there's been a few. There's obviously been a lot of sort of, a lot of uh, bad memories that <laughs> always are when you play sport. You're going to have some real low moments, but um, any time you win as a group, great, great times. We're talking about the reason that you go into playing cricket, Dave. I was, I was, had my memory jogged earlier, thinking about how well related you are in the world of cricket with your dad uh, and your brother. Um, serious question for you: What's it like being the best in your family? <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> yeah, I, I remind dad, him every day. His dad would argue that. <laughs> he would argue he that. Would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's better now than what I am. He's still playing. He's still playing. There is a saying for you here. If he's claiming that as a saying for you here, stats don't lie. Wow. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Now, anyone got a player here that uh, they can think of from from both teams over all the years, not just of T20, but T20 in particular, um, that perhaps sort of went under the radar a bit? I remember an Essex-Kent game Oh, it must be at least 10 years ago, at Chelmsford, and Alistair Cook was playing, and everyone was like, oh, he can't play T20 and all the rest of it. I tell you what, it was one of the best innings I've ever seen. It was just timing, it was proper cricket shots, he got a great score, can't remember what. But I think he got about 70-odd, play- didn't he? He batted really I well. I can't yeah. remember, but it was, just, it was just pure class. It doesn't have to be all thrashing and across the line and you know, improvisation. It was just proper cricket shots. Were there any other players who you thought perhaps were a little bit undervalued for me, the team, over the years of T20 in particular? Hmm. It's a good question. Yeah, very good. Um, uh, you've absolutely started. You, you, yeah. Oh, it's cold. That's, that, needs, that, needs some, that needs some real thinking. Uh, I'm trying, I'll, I'll try to think from a Kent perspective. Um, I don't know. I think... I think the, I think there are, there are different ways of doing it. I think there are, you know... Grant Flower done well, didn't he, Walks? Grant Flower yeah. was one of them who, who, yes. who, didn't, who didn't get a lot of... You, you wouldn't say you'd be worried about bowling in a Grant Flower, but he kind of... He, he seemed to accumulate runs. Yeah. And, and before you knew it, he was on 30. And then before you knew it, he was on 60. And, and, and he hadn't played a shot in anger. So there was players like yeah. that, which... And you played against uh, who was the boy down at Somerset? He was the same as well. Um, Hildreth, Hildreth, another one who you just couldn't stop really scoring, but not as in boundaries or big big sixes, booming shots everywhere. But they they seem to like kind of score constantly and put you under pressure in that way. Walks, eh? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, I think that absolutely right. I think um, Grant that year, two thousand eight. I think he had an absolute Kent were his, were his, were his team. I think they, we played against Essex. I think it must have been a couple of T Twenty games and a probably a couple of fifty over games. He might have even got runs in the championship. I don't know, but he just every time he turned up, I think Keezy referenced it. I'm sure on finals day he got he, he got runs that day as well in the yeah. final. And he just every time. But you're right. He was a brilliant fielder. Um, could bowl some handy spin, and he, and he he found a way of scoring runs and. I think, yeah, I think he's sort of going full circle. I think now people are obviously getting so much better smashing the ball out of the park. But there is still a, there's still room for the guys that can manipulate the field and get a little bit funky with some innovation, for sure. Um, I'll, I'll think of some, Steve, in next year. I can't, remember, I can't think of anything at the moment. <laughs> it's all right, I'm not that bothered. No, I, was just, <laughs> but I was just thinking that the name you mentioned there, Grant Flower, he was, wasn't he? I think for more than one season, Kent's nemesis always when these big games came up between the two, he, he always seemed to produce Grant. Yeah, it was annoying that year. Cool, blimey. Great man. <laughs> Great man. Great man to play with. He was, he was a, yeah. He was a yeah. awesome, awesome. Good in the dressing room, Dave. Very good. Very good. He was, um, he was, a, he was an out-and-out team player and the more team players you have in your side, 
the the the, the, the stronger you're going to be as a team. So um, you still need your your, your obviously your your other players, the the boys, what are quite selfish and go out there and and do good jobs. But them team players don't come round very often. And and when I mean team player, he would do anything it took for the team to win. It didn't matter what happened to him; he would do whatever. Yeah, whatever he could to uh, make the team win. So you don't get many of them. Now, just forget for a moment, the pair of you have played for both teams. Uh, we're talking about the battle of the bridge here. Um, but did, did Kent Essex, for you, Matt, you know, from whichever dressing you were coming from, did it, did it have a bit of extra spice about it to say, I don't know, Kent against Leicestershire? No. No, this is the weird thing. I, no. I, I, I never, and sh- I mean... It's not even I went to Essex, I, I realised. And I know the geography obviously makes sense. It's a local diary, of course. But I never really, I never really had it as a derby game. I was brought up by an old coach, Colin Page, bless him. And it was Surrey. Surrey were the ones. You know, don't, if you ever lose to Surrey, that's it. That's the worst thing that could ever happen. And I was brought on, up on that. And I came into a Kent squad in 92-3 where... There have been some absolute ding dongs, you know, and you'd hear the stories as a young player, you know, Monty Lynch for Surrey and Stewart and Thorpe, and you know, McCaig was going at them, and it was got, you know, Cowdery, and it was getting really nasty. Trevor Ward, and you know, it was they were the stories you were brought up on. So it was always Kent Surrey, never Kent Essex, and no, it was the Brown Hatters, wasn't it? It was. The... It was always the Don't Lose the Brown Hatters, yeah. And I yeah. think it was only then when I went to Essex did I realise. A, I got abused, as I say, in that last game for Kent by, by Kent fans for, for going. I mean, no one even knew, but it's obviously sneaked out. So I got some abuse. And then I think I sort of realised a bit more a bit more that, yeah, of course, there is a rivalry. Um, but I don't know. I never really I never really sort of thought much about it, I have to say. It was just another game of cricket. Um, always, always a you know, brilliant atmosphere. And, yeah, I, I think you know, it's been obviously now built up by... Some brilliant marketing teams behind the scenes at both Essex and Chil- and, uh, and Kent. I have to say that, of course. Um, and it's, it's right. It should, it should be. You know, it, it, you don't get many that many derbies or real derbies in in, in cricket that like, so similar to football. And it should be. Uh, it should be built up. And it's um, again for me. I've got mates on both. You know, obviously mates at Essex now and you know it's just a game of cricket and it's always go really great to try and beat them and, and catch up the old old teammates when you do so for me it's always a highlight game but um, don't put any added pressure on anybody um, that's sort of done from the outside but it's uh, yeah it was always Kent Surrey for me you're probably the same Dave aren't you yeah I was the same I suppose yeah definitely you only get the real kind of Essex Kent from Essex I'd say it was more Mm. More, more from that side than what it was from from the Kent side. I'd say. I'd say Kent was. We was more the Brown Hatters. I'd say, mm. and that just stayed with me all the time. I was always, I suppose, I always wanted to beat Surrey, always because we just, yeah. just their aura yeah. that you give off and their arrogance. Yeah. You used to. <laughs> Everyone wants to beat Surrey, don't they? That's to be fair. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Is that the case? Is that the case still Essex then? So the Kent game was obviously a big derby, but you really, really wanted to beat Surrey. Somerset yeah. was up. It was Somerset. Somerset. That, we did like. We, yeah, we kind of that. We grew to hate Somerset as well, didn't we? Walk? Yeah, I don't know why that. I think for, that's Fozzie and Alfonso Thomas. I think had a, had a real head-to-head one game, and it, it got a bit messy. And I think it was always. Uh, it was always a big rivalry for that three years when I was there. Remember what he called him. Oh, I can't you remember, remember it? No, no, it's probably not broadcastable. I didn't even say it, but I think, <laughs> I, <did. laughs> I think he called him Mark Fowler, didn't he? Oh, God, God, I know. Was idea. it Mark? Was it? Was it someone Fowler out of EastEnders? He called oh. him. Yeah, something I, I like that. Something along them lines, and it just all kicked off. It got a bit. It got a bit messy, and um, yeah, that was always a rivalry for some peculiar reason. And you do go that. You, it happens like that sometimes. You go through these. You know, yeah. Lancashire was another one. We seemed to play Lancashire in lots of big games over that period. And, and that was uh, always a bit of a ding dong as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It's sort of it, it, not necessarily geographical. You just sometimes have these rivalries within rivalries. It's, it's always, uh, it always sort of works out that way. 
I'll tell you what it might be, is the Somerset team song. You know, there's, there's always a team song when you win a game. For some reason, whenever Somerset win and I hear them singing, for whatever reason, that really winds me up more than anyone else's. I don't, I don't know why that would be, but it just really gets on my coach. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Anyway, listen, <laughs> chaps, our time is pretty much up. I just want to get yeah. your thoughts um, on um, how hopeful we are. We'll start with you, Dave, on um, there being a battle of the bridge in T20 or maybe a, a, you know, some sort of championship match. I don't know what's going to happen before uh, before September is through. Are we hopeful? I'd like to think so. I'd like to think we can get some cricket played. I'd like to, I'd like to have the boys around. I usually have the Essex boys come around and have a barbecue or something when they come down and play. So, yeah, look, it, I, I'd, like, I'd like to see some cricket played. I, I think a 2020 competition would be brilliant. Um, I'm not, sh- not, not so sure they'll play four-day cricket. Um, not sure how many games you'll get in in that short space of time. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I just don't think it'll work logistically for the, for the county. So, I, I think a bit of T20 cricket and maybe even if they want to play a limited over comp or something like that. I don't know if that's still around. Hawks, is that still around? 50 over stuff? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that might be... I think, oh, no, I don't know. We're still, I mean, I'm still waiting to hear, really, um, mm. what, what the actual formats are going to be. I, I suspect white ball cricket has probably got more of a shot. Um, there's lots of logistical issues around four-day cricket, of course. But um, hope, I think, yeah, I like you, mate. I think you said it all, really. I think we're hopeful. We're getting closer, I think. Um, Obviously, international cricket's coming first, which should be interesting to see how that works. And then, fingers crossed, we can full steam ahead. But it, it's going to take a lot of hard work behind the scenes to get that right. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we'll see some, some cricket. And I, hopefully it'll be a really exciting T20 competition. Um, with, yeah. With, without... yeah, maybe an extended T20 competition might be the way to go. And if this two-metre rule gets, that's two metres, gets knocked, it is, seriously, gets knocked down to one, um, then uh, maybe we can get some spectators in. Because let's be honest, if you can go to the zoo, surely you can go to a cricket ground, yeah? Well, I live near. I live on the beach. So if you, if you want to spend 10 minutes walking on the beach, then you probably well, understand that, that not, not, not really existing uh, in, in, on Whistable Beach for a long time. But yeah, look, there's, in theory, it could be done getting people through the gates, absolutely. But then you know, there are other issues I suspect around the facilities that you need to sort of provide, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to get into that now, but um, everyone's working really hard. I know Ken, I'm sure they're doing the same at Essex to work really hard to try and make this work um, with the possibility of some fans. And mate, we're still a month away. So it was from a proposed August the first start. And if God, you know, the way we're moving forward, it could look very different in a month's time. Um, we'll see what happens, but fingers crossed we'll get something. Fingers crossed, best case scenario, there'll be some fans to be able to enjoy it too. Yeah, well, we've got some football going now, haven't we? We've got uh, some other sports going as well, so let's hope cricket is not too far away. Gentlemen, many thanks for joining us. Thanks for your reminiscences about the Battle of the Bridge. David Masters, great to have you with us. What are you up to at the moment during this lockdown? Are you busy? Thanks a lot. Yeah, busy. Oh, We're doing a bit of work, so yeah, just. Uh pulling about really at the moment so all good have you Matty still preparing hopefully for a season yes well we're just it we're still waiting to to find out you know what what it looks like when are we starting can we get the green light to go ahead and get the boys back practicing it's um we sort of working around August the 1st and working around July the 1st get back so how that again you know how that looks at the moment is going to be tricky to sort of put into practice small group practice but we're getting closer we're nudging closer and um i know there's some frustrated lads out there desperately get back but hopefully it won't be too long now hopefully there'll be a battle of the bridge within the next few months we can all get down to the cloud fm counter ground we can all get down to the spitfire ground and enjoy a bit of cricket david masters thank you matt thank, Walker, you. thank you very much and happy father's day to everyone pleasure yes, happy father's, day. father's day, day. Father's day. Go on, matt. <laughs> great to see you